today we're going to be presenting on job hunting strategies. Um, this is our third of four sessions. So again, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, again, welcome to the Hispanic Federation's New York Virtual Career Series uh, in partnership with the New York Department of Youth and Community Development, who is hosting a four-part webinar series to provide New York City residents with career opportunities and have a chance to meet training providers, connect to, resource, to hiring resources, and learn how to navigate in applying and interviewing for jobs online, as well as getting connections to a multitude of job opportunities. My name is Vivi Acosta. I am the Director of Economic Empowerment at the Hispanic Federation. I am very excited about the program we have organized for you today. Today, we're gonna to help you navigate job portals, how to prepare a resume and cover letter that stands out and discuss, discuss job preparedness for New York City residents. If you, are learn, if you are interested in learning more about our next events or our previous webinars that were great, um, please visit our website at hispanicfederation.org slash career expo 2022. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. Um, and before we start, Let's make these quick points, housekeeping rules, make sure that you are muted. We are clicking on the Q&A icon to submit any questions at any time, and you can use the chat for comments. And please note again that this webinar is being recorded. Now, let's get right into today's event, Job yeah. Hunting Strategies. Today, we will, be, we will be hearing from one of the Hispanic Federation's all-stars and an expert in, of job preparedness and skills training. He is Freddy Agraid and is the Digital Initiatives Manager in our Orlando office. Freddy holds a master's degree from Rowan University in New Jersey, specializing in nonprofit communication. In the late 80s, he started working with Hispanic farm workers and urban communities throughout the Northeast. He spent the following decades creating startups, which included a, included a community newspaper, software applications, financial services, and digital social initiatives. Thank you, Freddy, for taking the time to join us today. We are so excited to hear more about how to better equip and prepare our audience for effective job hunting strategies. Freddy, without any further ado, please take the mic. Thank you, Vivi. Thank you very much. I appreciate um, this opportunity to present uh, this very important uh, subject. Uh, we definitely need to build up the skills and understand that job search in itself is a job. It's, a, it's a, uh, a project that you have to undertake if you want to actually uh, generate changes in your life. Uh, it's, uh, it's an activity that really, if you have the tools and you have the skills and you have the uh, strategy, you can definitely um, move your career and your profession in a positive way. So we, let me just start with uh, our presentation. <clears throat> Okay, right here, we have it. Um, <clears throat> moving ahead of the crowd, <clears throat> this is very important to start understanding that we live in a different world. The world before COVID and the world after COVID. The, the changes have been very, very important and uh, they're here to stay, stay in a way um, that, for example, the trends are changing constantly and we have to consider the new trends in, in uh, every industry and consider if you would like to change also industries at this point. It, it is uh, interesting also that this is a market that is more um, optimum for the person who's seeking work because there are many opportunities at this point after the pandemic Many companies are looking for employees. You can see it all over, uh, you know, the stores, uh, everywhere you see the word, the word hiring. So the, it's a great uh, moment if you're looking to advance your career professionally. Look at trends, important to consider, for example, what uh, industries are moving forward, what industries have been affected in a way that will it will take more time for that industry to advance. Also important, it's important to identify transferable skills and potential new ones. For example, uh, you can 
know an industry and that expertise in an industry is transferable. You know the industry, you know the jargon, you know basically how the industry works. So you can think about maybe transferring uh, from one position in that industry to another position. That's something you can consider. Also, uh, transferable skill would be communication skills. If you're good at conveying information internally and externally with clients, with your coworkers, uh, that is something that you can transfer to another position and uh, you can benefit from uh, being a good communicate, communicator. Analysis skills are very important because if you're good at use, use, utilizing data, if you're good at crunching numbers and being able to identify patterns and maybe able to establish processes or protocols, that's a very important skill that employees are looking for. Also, uh, project management skills, if, you're, uh, if you have been managing teams, you have been launching products or services, managing schedules, so you know, time management, these are skills that you can also transfer to other areas. So you should consider the fact that you have those skills, including also leadership skills. If you're good at managing groups of people, uh, that is something that you can move to another position. Also teamwork and collaboration. If you're willing to step up for the good of the company and uh, are good at teamwork, there are many companies are looking for people with good teamwork um, skills. Creative and critical thinking is another transferable skill. You can, for example, if you're working in the creative industries of arts, science, marketing, those are very important skills. But also in other industries, if you're good at looking at the new approach to solve problems, and not only that, people uh, and companies are looking for people who can convert ideas into action, not only have a good idea, you have to be able to convert it into action. If you have those skills, you can then transfer them. Adaptability is a key word in uh, nowadays, adjust to changing situations. Uh, big companies, small companies, and especially startups are basically uh, environments, work environments where you have to be adaptable. If you're good at that, that's an important skill also. Consider remote work and expanding your uh, search. If you um, are, um, you know, have the capacity to work remotely, uh, you and you would like to consider a remote uh, work position, well, you can do that and and expand your geography because there's no um, limit in terms of uh, the geography. You can do that. Uh, so that's an area that's really uh, has taken off. Many companies are also have remote opportunities. Understand and benefit from, from automation and technology. It's important that you analyze what technology, what applications are being used in your area of work and also, or in your area of interest. And if you understand what platforms, uh, what applications, what knowledge you need to know and you have it and you understand it, or you uh, are focused on acquiring those skills, that will definitely help you to land that important job. And very importantly, that's uh, what we will cover today, develop and implement a plan to get that job, the job that you want. That's key here because looking for a job, as I mentioned before, it's a, an activity that really, if you want to do it right and you want to uh, establish a pathway for a brighter future, you can do it, but you have to dedicate time and work on strategies. And uh, we will go now into the strategies on, for job search. First, we will cover self-assessment. Uh, that is key here so that you can understand and position yourself according <clears throat> to your needs, but also according to your capabilities, your skills. Job search tools, we will see that nowadays you have different, so many different tools, but you, you need to know or learn how to use them effectively to maximize your uh, search, job search success. Company evaluation, that's key also in this process because you are focusing your attention or you should focus your attention 
on those companies that have a set of, uh, I would say environment or, or a, a culture, a, an institutional culture that aligns with your uh, expectations, with, you, with your needs. We'll go into more detail on that. Also resume adaptation, that's key also because that will increase your opportunities to get that interviewed. And uh, customizing cover letters are also, it's also an important uh, skill that you have to develop in uh, searching for jobs. Job interview strategies also very important because once you go to the first steps and you get that interview, how are you going to maximize that opportunity to not only get the job, but get the salary that you think uh, you deserve. Uh, and that we'll go into that uh, detail on that also specifically. First, self-assessment is very important. You have to, uh, it's an introspective a process where you analyze your skills and abilities. You have to be very, uh, you know, methodic and uh, not emotional, very, uh, you know, work with uh, what you know you, you can do uh, in terms of uh, hard skills, soft skills and abilities. Uh, uh, I'm missing a B there. Motivation and aspiration, interests and passions. Those are key also uh, elements. What motivates you? What in inspires you? What is? What are your interests? Do you, you want to travel, or do you want to have a job where you don't travel? Those are key elements that you have to consider when uh, looking for a job. Job search tools. That's key also. Uh, you have to understand that when many years ago, humanity looked for jobs using newspaper and a pencil or a pen and they would circle the different positions and then they would call or send resumes. And it was kind of a you know, tedious job where you only had uh, limited information. Nowadays, you have the search tools like Indeed, LinkedIn, Google for Jobs, Zip Recruiter, Career Builder, and many, many more, many more uh, platforms that uh, are called job, job aggregators. This uh, platform will give you a lot of information and we'll go into, uh, into each one of them. Uh, definitely, this is very important that you, that you learn how to use those. You can also go into what's called job boards. Job boards are uh, platforms within uh, company um, applications or, or web pages, I should say, that are basically dedicated to the job uh, search and placement of employees. Amazon has one, uh, McDonald's, Walmart, you know, many companies have their own um, job uh, boards. What you need to do is definitely identify or start broad and then move uh, into your uh, other options in terms of what are you looking for? And uh, let's go more into the details. You first have to analyze for every position, if you possess the requirements that they were asking for. You have the skills, you have the experience, the education. Those are key elements in job search because those, the, the, nowadays, when you submit a resume, it will go deeply to a, to, to a filter in most cases, bigger companies, not in smaller ones, but it will go through a filter where automatically it will analyze the text and it will basically eliminate those um, resumes that do, do not have those basic skills, experience, and education. <clears throat> so you have to make sure that those, the, the, you apply only for positions that have the, the requirements, that you meet those requirements. And basically also important job description. Does it analyze, uh, align with your expectations? Is it what you're looking for? Remember, you will dedicate a lot of time, 40 hours a day, a week, uh, eight hours a day or more <clears throat> to uh, work. Uh, and you have to basically understand that you have to be um, in a good position. You have to be happy every morning. You have to be uh, in a positive mood. If you're taking a job 
where you will be uh, unhappy, that is really not the, the optimum. You know, that's not really what you want. And that's why it's so important to understand first what the job description is. Uh, for example, uh, go into it and does it require a lot of travel? Does it require lifting uh, um, heavy objects? You have to understand and analyze that part very, very, very thoroughly before applying. Is the salary range adequate for you? And uh, a good way of understanding if it's good way for you, a good salary range or good um, wage for you <clears throat> is using the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'll go into that page now and uh, go into this. Um, option, let me just also, uh, at the end of this, I will uh, paste it on the ch um, chat. When you go, for example, in New York, you go to New York, and then you will see that you have the different um, options in terms of classification. These are the broad classifications uh, based on the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, page. And then you have all the different occupations. For example, if you, if we uh, go into, for example, IT support or IT, let me see if I can get or information, information technology. Maybe you'll see that it has computers as a computer and information system manager. You can go down and understand, for example, that if you are um, a computer system analyst, this is what the medium, median age or mean hourly wage will be in uh, New York. And this is a mean uh, wage, annual wage. And this is very important to, uh, to understand if it's, if it's increasing or decreasing, okay? So you can go and understand by looking at the, the positions what is the wage that you should be looking for in uh, for that job in in your state? So uh, you can go up here and then write another another um, for example sales manager another position sales manager and you go here and you can see that medium age for that uh, for that position. Is 68.46 per hour mean age mean uh, wage, so it's 142 thousand dollars. So this is very important that you go in deep and understand what you're looking for in terms of salary, and uh, really uh, take a look at our every position and really um, do your homework, because by going here and understanding the wage for each position. You'll be, uh, you have a better understanding of what options you have. If you see that they're offering something below the uh, mean wage or the average wage, then you have space to uh, basically uh, look for options and uh, negotiate. Okay, so it's very important. Let me just uh, put in this chat here the the link to the page. One second, please. Okay. Okay, that's the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, page. Okay, so let's move on. Important, the benefits. Are they appropriate for your needs? Or do they cover, uh, they have health insurance? Do they cover 60%, 80%, 100%? Do they have a 401k? Uh, what are the benefits and are they appropriate for your needs at this point? Are you willing to uh, go with what they offer or uh, basically you have to understand uh, for each position, what options, what benefits package they offer. And is the industry category in the interesting to you? Uh, again, you will dev devote a lot of time to this position. So it's very important that you understand that you have to wake up every morning and uh, your life could be great. You like your job or the opposite. And that's really, you know, nowadays after, after the COVID, 
crisis. Uh, you know, all the surveys show that people are more interested in finding and, and, and being part of a company where they feel good, the, the people have understood that life is short and that you have to be very happy. All the, the uh, surveys are showing <clears throat> that people are interested in jobs in, get, in having working in a job where they feel good about it uh, because uh, COVID has really changed the perspective on many, many things. You are the keywords that you use in providing the desired results. That's important. That's why also it's good that you go and do the your research in terms of the pages that you uh, you know the job search uh, aggregator. Important. The job search tools are divided in different areas. They have different filters. One of them, of course, is a category: IT, management, art, advertising, engineering. Also, they have the titles, manager, technician. For example, you can do, uh, we'll do some, uh, some, uh, some short uh, search for different positions. Also location, you can actually identify or uh, what area are you willing, how, how long or how far are you willing to work from your home, 15, 30, 60 miles every day. That's definitely going to you know, define, of course, the, the, the options. The wider the range, the wider the, um, the parameters in terms of geography, the more options you, options you will have. But uh, you, you, know, you, would, you need to be willing to commute uh, 60 miles if you want to open it or 30 miles, or some people are <clears throat> working from home uh, as um, you know, they, they say, <clears throat> they understand that their need right now is to stay home and work from uh, remotely. Those are options not right now. And many companies are also offering a hybrid a workplace. The word hybrid is now being used more to describe the workplace than your car, because there are so many companies that have gone the hybrid route. Uh, in many instances, for example, they go 50-50, you go one week, two days, the next week, three days, uh, and basically, or you have 60-40, you have different options uh, nowadays. And depending on, on your expectations, uh, many, many companies uh, are offering hybrid because they know that most people got used to it. Some positions are not um, adequate for hybrid. For example, if you're working in a warehouse, you have to be there. And many positions in healthcare uh, require that you are there to work with the patient. So it, all, it will all depend on the position that you're looking for. The, when was it posted? Yeah, these, are, these are the search tools, filters that you will need to know and understand, and we'll go into them uh, in, in a couple of minutes. If it was posted, when you, when you first go into a job search aggregator or tool, you can start like in, for, uh, looking for positions that have been posted like last week. But then as you uh, uh, narrow your search, and you're looking for uh, job positions more often, then you go down to three days and may maybe if you're checking every day, you can go and pass day so that you can get the fresh, in a way, you know, fresh uh, postings. The requirements is very important, no degrees or three, three years uh, of experience, for example, uh, or, um, if you have to show that you have been working specifically in, in an area three years or more or five years, you will see that. And that's very important uh, as a filter because many, many companies will, uh, will not give you a chance if you're not, if, if not, you're not close to the minimum requirement. Full-time, part-time contractor internship, those are also options that they offer and the estimated salary. Okay, so, and also notifications is very important. We'll go into them when we go uh, look for at Indeed and we look for jobs uh, as aggregators. Notifications are a good way of searching for jobs because you add keywords and the system will generate every time they post a uh, 
position with those uh, specific uh, keywords, you will get a notification and that's a great work way of getting fresh, uh, you know, newly posted uh, positions. Let's see, uh, let's go and uh, check Indeed, for example, let me open here, Indeed. Okay, we have Indeed. Indeed is one of the biggest uh, platforms that, you, that are available. And if you look for, for example, I put here, IT support specialist, it will show you uh, the different positions. Here, you will see the um, summary. And then when you hit uh, each position, it will all then give you all the information. Excuse when me, you Fred, at, Yes, sure. Are you, are, you, are you sharing your Indeed screen? Because we're only oh, seeing it, the it, present. It, it's not showing. Yes, okay. it's not showing. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. Let, me, let me just start again. Okay, let me just start again. Thank you. Let's redo it. Uh, it's, wait, hold on a second. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Technical difficulties now. Okay. There you go. Okay, good. Then let me move this screen here. Hold on. Okay, now, we, you know, now you're seeing it, right? Yes, now I do. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Great. Okay. IT support specialist, for example, I, I put that as a keyword uh, area New York, and then I hit fi find work, find jobs. As you saw here, in this case, uh, it breaks down the geographic um, area to 5, 10, 15, as you can see up to 100 miles. This is important that you set up uh, that geographical um, area. Then when it was posted, you can, as, you, as I said, you can start seven days. Experience level, this is very important because you have to understand where you fit into one of those three categories. If you go into an entry level, then it will filter it accordingly. And then if you have different certifications, that's uh, also important. For example, the CompTIA A, A plus, it's a very, um, uh, you know, it's a it's, um, certification that it's really, uh, part of what IT support is nowadays as an option, then you're looking for full-time. And uh, these are the options of remote, or uh, again, maybe they, they don't put it there in, in, the, um, in the posting, but um, many companies will require, uh, you know, will give you the offer, the option of hybrid, uh, unless again, uh, you know, it's a specific uh, industry where you have to be there network and servers. This is basically if you're specializing in, in an area and then the uh, salary estimate uh, and then location, well, you select a New York here so you can, and you can change that. Many times also you can go into uh, to, to identify specific company. If you want to work in Amazon, you can say it here uh, and then look for jobs in that company or one of the big companies uh, that, that you're interested in, that you have heard that they have good benefits or they, you know, you know someone there and um, you, you understand that that would be a great option for you. Then you can select the option of company and then here uh, the education level. Once you have that, the filter selected, you will then start looking uh, for options. It's, it's good to open an account because that way you'll be able to um, select your options and narrow your search. Once you go into one position, you click, as I said before here, it will give you a lot of information. Uh, for example, here, it will show you reviews. And these reviews are very important because, uh, and uh, you know, that, that is part of what you will do. And I will go into more detail uh, then uh, later because that, this is where you understand and know on, and can read about how, how is it to work for that company. Um, you know, this is information or these are reviews created and published by people who have been working in that company. So that insight is so important and you should then um, look for um, those reviews and read them thoroughly. You will always see 
negative reviews, and that happens in Airbnb, Amazon, in terms of products. You know, do you have to read through them and extract what the majority or most people are saying? Because again, you will have one or two. If it's a lot of people saying negative things, well, that gives you an idea, but don't read one, only one negative and 10 positives and understand that it's a negative company. So uh, that will happen a lot. Here, you also have information in terms of salary, uh, more information about the, the position. When you click here, then you will go down and go into the details. This is a key here, area here, job description. This is where, for example, you will see the benefits. You will see information about the job. Hmm. And uh, here you don't have a lot of information in terms of what the position is asking for. You can go into other uh, um, descriptions that are here. For example, they give you responsibilities. They give you a lot of information. And in terms of the qualifications, this is where you have to fit in terms of what you offer and what they are asking for. Remember, many, many, many companies are using now automatic filters so that they can filter out the applications and the resumes that are not basically related to uh, or don't have the basic requirements. So look for this area here. If you do qualify, go for it. If you, after the, you, we do the research and we'll go into that further, further. But if you are not do not qualify at a minimum, uh, go to the next uh, position and, and really uh, you know, look for other options, okay? So this is important. Uh, if, if we go on into another position, for example, uh, here, I can say retail sales associate and then hit find jobs we'll see different merchandisers or retail companies, and you can start looking for them for options. For example, here, TJ Max, you see here that you can, you will apply on the company side. That's what I, before I mentioned, you go into their job uh, section of the website, web page. And um, basically, one thing that you should know is that in Indeed, on Indeed you can set up your resume. But for in this area, you update your resume and you can change the uh, resume and adapt it to that position. Here you see the full description, the summary, and this is important responsibilities. Read them thoroughly so that you understand that uh, what they're asking for and what uh, you will need to do. And if you feel comfortable with it, then go ahead. Well, also the requirements, understand first, if you have the basic requirements for that position, and then look for um, the uh, the different, you know, the, the detailed description before you apply. When if you like the company, you just hit uh, I like it, and then narrow down the your search. As as you continue to do this, you will understand that there are different options, and then you can change your search. Uh, increase it or decrease it to make it more, um, you know, to narrow it down. You don't want to have 100 options to work with. You should work with something that is manageable. Uh, you can always understand, for example, that you find jobs where your resume is good for that job and you can have different resumes. Then you don't have to adjust them that much. Then you can go and, and uh, actually apply quickly because once you go into Indeed and you set up your account, you will basically go and download, I mean, or in, in, in insert your resume section by section, and we'll go into that part uh, later. But this is a, a great page, a great area to look for jobs Indeed. It's a, uh, it, it's a very robust application or platform. And you should you know, consider this option when looking for uh, jobs. Let me see if I can go here and let me know if it's uh, Google for jobs, Google for jobs. It's another option. 
when you're going to Google for jobs, look for the blue uh, ribbon here, the uh, setting and click on it, the top uh, part. This is another uh, job aggregator. As you can see, it has uh, many different components, many, many, many similar components to what I said mentioned before. Here you have the category, the title, you have uh, options to, to select. You can go directly to one location also based on miles from your point of uh, your, from your home. Stay posted. Again, this will this is key here because you will start, you know, if you see a position that was posted last month, uh, maybe you want to take a look at that one, but preferably going to you know, not positions are that not that old in terms of posting. The requirements also key here, uh, type of uh, job, full-time, part-time, company type, type that will definitely uh, be based also on, on industry or your classification and employer. Here you have, for example, big companies that uh, you may want to consider based on your needs and your you know, expectation. This is, then you go, for example, Google for jobs. You can, um, you can go here and say, for example, project manager jobs. I want to look for a project manager, manager job. Uh, for example, here, uh, it has set up Orlando as the local uh, geography. Uh, you can do it in New York, wherever you live. And you look for different options. If you some, if you see a company that you like, you can go ahead on uh, this, click on it, and again you will see qualifications, you will see responsibilities. Go into deep into this part, because again we'll go into that uh, in a few minutes. This is key here. What you want to understand is, our uh, if you if your resume has many of these. Uh, qualifications and if your work experience reflects many of the responsibilities, you will definitely have a chance to go through the filters and end up uh, receiving a, a communication for uh, an interview. That's what we all want, right? We want to um, increase uh, the options or the opportunity to go and get, get that call or get that um, communication, that email saying, uh, we would like to speak with you further. Here again, you have a company as uh, Ocean Engineering International, all the qualifications, responsibilities, and of course, full description. And here you have similar jobs here. This is also important here because it will tell you what that position is paying typically in, your, in this area, in your area, and over here, you have Glassdoor, Ambition Box, many others. These are uh, platforms for employees. Uh, you can read uh, reviews from employees, uh, usually uh, former employees. And that's also key here because it will give you background information on that company. They, good, they have good rating in terms of, uh, you know, good metrics. And then you can read what their, yeah, atmosphere and the environment it looks like from the inside. We didn't have this years ago. This is so important because you have a look into that company that you never had before, unless you knew someone in that company. So reviews from employees, are, it's key also to understand uh, if um, a company has a culture <clears throat> that is uh, in you know, aligned with your expectations. So that's important here. Okay, so going back to Indeed, uh, I mean, to so Google for job, you go here, Google for jobs, click on the blue ribbon, and then you go in and start looking for options. If you if you see something that you like, you can real, uh, just click here and it will uh, save it. If you click on the bottom right here, new job alerts, then, before you do that, you have to write the um, keywords. And on the keywords will be, for example, um, uh, project, for example, retail associate. 
that that's a keyword that you would use, for example, and you click here, that will generate based on what you have selected in the filters. Of course, you have to select, you should select also, you know, the geography beforehand and select different the different options, full-time, part-time. So by creating a filter before you do this, you basically are narrowing the what what they what it will show. Then when you go into the save areas, you have uh, this is an old, of course, from other courses, but you will have the different options, and then you can you'll be able to work with them in terms of uh, save and on the alerts. These are the alerts for different keywords that you you'll be able to uh, generate. So this is a good way of doing it, getting automatic uh, alerts or notifications on job possibilities in your area. You will receive an email and uh, you'll be able to follow up if you're interested. So these are options that you have working with this uh, news aggregator. Let's go back to um, the presentation. And uh, now when you look for a position, you have the option of really going into strategy and doing what not many people are doing. And that is to go into a company and evaluate that company from many perspectives. One of the sources for evaluation is website. When you go into a website of a company, you will have a good idea of what the company looks like if they have stores or different uh, locations throughout the, the US or anywhere else. That, it's, that gives you an idea of the possibilities for growth. If you're willing to work with that company and grow with that company, they usually have a news section where it will show what uh, new stores are there, they're opening, what new services or products they're offering. This is key information to help you understand if this is a, a company that is growing or this is, this is a company that is stagnated. So you have to, uh, you should use the website as a first uh, way of understanding and uh, evaluating a company. Social media is another way of uh, going into a company and understanding uh, a company. Part of doing a good job search, being successful at doing, going through the process of uh, identifying the company, the position, applying for it, getting um, the interview and getting the, the job, that process is understanding the company because it this will help you in, in two ways. It will first give you an idea of what the company looks like from the inside in terms of, again, expansion, projects that they, they uh, promote, and uh, even the company culture. But also all this information will help you if you, you go into an interview because you will, you will have a lot of good information that you can use to show that employer that you have done your research. News also, you do a Google search on the company. These, uh, all these options will give you a lot of good information. Again, going back to reviews, understanding what employees are saying, because it is key to, to know what uh, the company culture is like before you go in. And also LinkedIn. LinkedIn uh, is a social, professional social network or social uh, media um, platform that basically uh, it's a combination of a job aggregator because it offers jobs. You can look for positions, but at the same time, it's like a Facebook in terms of people, you open up an account and it would be good if you post uh, in terms of uh, different uh, articles that you find, you can become a curator of articles. That will definitely help you find a job specific, uh, more specific in managerial positions. If you really want to build up your professional profi uh, profile, uh, you can use LinkedIn to basically connect with people, understand what others are uh, doing, and LinkedIn also in, in this context, will help you evaluate the company because you can look for the company 
and understand the what employees are saying. And you can see the profile in terms of young people, older people, where are they located? You can basically dissect through all these options that I'm showing you a company, understand the company. The more you understand the company, the better chance you have of getting, landing that job because most people do, don't do this. If you take the time and uh, dedicate some time, some effort to understanding a company that you really like to work with, these are the key factors. You do this by opening a uh, spreadsheet with the five uh, subjects that I, uh, you know, the criteria, website, social media, news, reviews, and LinkedIn. And then you copy and paste and create a profile for that company. That is key here to understanding. If we, you really want to, before that you do that, you read, and if you select the company, you then go and paste the information into uh, a spreadsheet so that you can manage the different companies because uh, the, the list will continue to grow as you look for other positions. If you do this, if you take the time to uh, go through these steps, you will increase your chances of uh, getting into a good, landing a job or going through the process and getting a, a, an interview and getting a good job with a company that you like and that you understand that you will be, you know, you will wake up every morning and uh, be happy there, not uh, the opposite. We don't want that at this point in time. Resume adaptation is also key. When you select a company, you select a, a position, you're saying this is a position that I want to go after. This, this would be great for me. The salary is good. The outlook, the description is good. Let me then do some uh, research on job openings. After you do this, you do uh, understand that the job description aligns with your expect expectations. That's, that is key here. And uh, if you see that alignment, then you can go with it, okay? Um, what are the skills, experience, education, and certification required? Do you have them? This is also key. Try, you know, it, nowadays there are different, so many different options. Again, when you start doing your research, you will see if you, based on, on your level of expertise and your level of skills, if they're very, um, you know, if you're in an industry that is really limited, you have, you're in, in a science field, which is very, very specific. You may not have the wide range of options. Then you have to work with what you have, unless you want to expand your search and move uh, laterally or to another industry that you think based on what we, we discussed in terms of skills, you can move to. If it's a very specific company or, or I mean job, that you do, then you will have less options. So it's so important that you look for skills and experience and the requirements, especially certifications. Is the salary range adequate for you? That's also important because if if they're if you're seeing that they're offering uh, something that is below what you expect, maybe you want to consider. Unless you really like the company, you say you know, you you. Uh, want either to start at a lower salary and, and grow in that company or negotiate a higher salary. What benefits do they have? Do they attract you? So uh, the word is attract you. Characteristics of a successful resume. Do they meet basic requirements of the position? That is very, very important. Again, don't go after coming, uh, companies or positions that do not reflect what you really want. Um, and if you're not uh, in aligned with that position, don't go after that. Uh, the, the resume has to have a proper appearance in relation to the company and the position. You have to present it, present it in the well, strong and well-organized content. The content has to be clear with, that shows your experience and skills effectively. Also avoid errors, which uh, we all need to look at things twice 
always good uh, when you're showing a resume to uh, basically show it to other friends, family, uh, so that they can take a look at it. The appearance, it's important. The text must be concise, but impacting. Don't include too much information. Select only relevant information that matches the description of each, each specific position. Remember, uh, people, uh, employers or recruiters have to read hundreds of uh, resumes constantly. So be concise. Don't go over in terms of uh, offering information if it's not relevant. If it's relevant, go for it. Use clear and leg legible font. Important, don't use script or hand, you know, the, the fonts that are um, uh, like handwriting because that will definitely uh, not help you. Avoid large blocks of text. The eye tends to reject the text, break them down. Use uh, headlines, use bullets, use graphical elements, uh, and the design uh, of the of the uh, resume to basically break it down so that you can uh, offer uh, a resume that it's really uh, appealing. Many of, for example, the this Indeed or the job aggregators may not allow you to do that. So work on the text. Uh, because they usually, for example, have different blogs, for example, job one, uh, job two, and then you, you write all the description. They may not have that. But if uh, it's always good to have a resume on paper so that you can send it also uh, if needed. Keep your resume to a maximum of two pages because over two pages, it would be you know, uh, too, too extensive. To, uh, if, you, if you have to go over two pages because you have 30, 40 years of experience, uh, try, well, try, try to keep it uh, as simple as possible. Important, the name should appear on the top of the page with a medium font size, not excessively large. It's also important to understand that if you're looking for a job in the US, uh, here, uh, the use of photos in the uh, resume is not it's not uh, used. It's not used. Uh, you should avoid using photos in your resume. Uh, basically, that's uh, in many other countries uh, that's uh, practice, but not in the U.S. Include email, phone number, area code, and postal address. You can add your social link, uh, social media accounts only if you have a for portfolio or the content will help you present a positive image. This is so important because many employers are using, are going into Facebook or other um, social media platforms before they hire a person to understand more about the, the uh, character of that individual. If your social media profile or your page only show, shows you uh, having fun and uh, partying and uh, just relaxing, it would be good if you can uh, balance it out with something, some posts that show you in a more maybe professional or more, more uh, um, intellectual way so that they not only see that happy part or that, that part of you. It's good to have a well-balanced uh, social media account if you're looking for a job because again, most employers are going uh, to look for that. So be careful of what you post always because you don't want a negative image of you or maybe a positive in one way, but not in terms of a professional environment. Also important, when you use your email, select or create an, e an, e an email that is looks professional. Uh, you may use an email that is funny or uh, interesting, creative for your personal life, please create a professional looking or uh, appear uh, in terms of appearance email, because that also is a first impression <clears throat> that is so important. So uh, always good to have that in mind. When creating a resume, uh, the educational section should have your resume, high school diploma, including the name, city, country, and graduation year, 
But if you have a college degree, you don't need to include your high school um, information unless you graduated with honors or received distinction. Include the degree with this concentration, only the average if it's over 3.0. Uh, the higher, the better, if you can include it. Add certifications and courses that are relevant to the position. Nowadays, you have many organizations such as um, Coursera and others that offer certifications. Always good to look for those options. Uh, maybe uh, associations, for example, Project Management Association, they offer different certifications. It's always good to think of you as a package. The more uh, complete that that package is in terms of branding, the better options you have or of landing a good paying position. You know, we do a lot of uh, research, for example, when we buy a car or a computer or uh, many other products, uh, it's always good to prepare ourselves as a, as a package, as a brand, so that when employers do the research on us, they will find a more complete package, more complete brand. So always good to think of yourself as a, in a way, because you're branding yourself as a professional. So it's very important to uh, think of options or ways in which you can enhance your professional brand. Resume adaptation skills and experience are key to making summary stand out when you when you earn wages or didn't. It's very important because even if you took an internship during the summer, you gain experience and you were able to uh, fulfill uh, tasks that you should include in your resume if they're relevant. Present the jobs in reverse order. The first one, uh, the first uh, most recent jobs first. Highlight your accomplishments, especially in your latest work, including tools, apps, and techniques you became familiar with. That's key nowadays. If you are good at using Excel, um, Word, if you are able to use uh, Google Forms or different platforms, specific platforms of the area or uh, of the work expertise. Uh, if you're an engineer, CAD, or platforms that are used for that, for that industry, uh, include them and um, in a way express not only the fact that you use them, but that you use them well, you can attach the use of that specific high-end application or platform to a job that you completed within your resume. That will definitely increase your chances of being able to you know, pass through the filters and get that a call for an interview. Start descriptions with action verbs. This is key here. Now we're going into the creation of a good resume. It describes your tasks using word, words like developed, verbs, implemented, instituted, expanded, supervised. Those are strong verbs that you should use. Also in your experience section, nowadays there's a tendency for employers to look for basically action achievements uh, that are measurable. For example, we reached or got or achieved or impacted, those are key words, but it's also good to include specific numbers. We increased by $5,000 the daily sales. We improved by 65% retention. Use numbers and narratives also, double. We doubled the level of, uh, of for example, satisfaction uh, in terms of clients, we increased by one third sales, three out of four clients returned. Use those uh, metrics, either in percentages or amount money uh, that came in or that you were able to save the company. And also you can use in, in narrative form what you accomplished. This is very important. This is what makes you go from a, an applicant to a, a person who will be called for an interview. Also, you have uh, you can show what you solved, challenges or problems that you solved. For example, we were able to re reduce the loss of materials, cut claims, decrease processing time, increase sales. Those are key factors uh, that will definitely help you 
get that in job interview. Also for each position, you should include the title, start and end date or the word present if you're still working there. Organization, city, state and country if, you, if it's outside of the US. Also important project management, uh, the use of birth for project management, for example, led, coordinated, executed, headed, produced, oversaw. Those are very strong verbs that will add uh, really a, a way of conveying, they, they become a way of conveying energy that you definitely want to convey. Also created, built, developed, formed, instituted, launched, spearheaded. These are strong verbs for projects. Increase efficiency, income, or satisfaction, advanced, delivered, expanded, expedited, improved, maximized. You see that you're seeing that these are verbs that are very strong. They, they carry an energy, generated change or improvement, integrated, redesigned, restructured, strengthened, upgraded, transformed. Those are key that, verbs that you can use to start um, what you did, uh, your job experience, customer support, advice, educated, informed, and result. By building your resume using these verbs, you're increasing your chances of getting that job interview. Also important is resume adaptation. It's very important to use, use a platform, a template, I should say, from Word, from Google Docs, uh, where you can show your experience, your uh, education, your background, show yourself again in a package that is attractive and that will definitely enhance the options, the possibilities of you getting a job interview. The co cover letter is very important also that uh, something that you should uh, work on each time that you apply for a new position, if the platform allows it, the cover letter will give you that edge. If you have the option of uh, adding a cover letter and you don't do it, that will definitely decrease your chances of being considered. So writing an effective letter requires work, some work, but it can make a difference. Uh, because you're, again, it will give you an edge over other candidates with similar qualifications. It's very important. You only have six seconds to catch, grab the attention of the person in 15 or 20 words. So uh, and you want to avoid being deleted again because they go through so many resumes uh, that uh, it's so easy to be deleted if you don't grab their attention their attention in a few words. For example, here uh, you have to work with cover letters. First, the purpose that it's each letter should summarize your capabilities, communicate your interest in the position, and it should positively impact by presenting a memorable image to prevent the recruiter from pressing the delete button. So this is the purpose of, or the cover letter and you should communicate how your skills and experience made you make you an ideal person for that position. You can express how you would contribute to the company and show that you have the knowledge and skills, uh, knowledge about the organizations, and that you took, you took the time to uh, understand the company by conducting research. This is also important because you have to communicate that you have to communicate it in a way that is from their position, my skills, my abilities will help your company reach the goals or your department reach the goals. That is key here, putting always yourself from their perspective. And we'll go into more detail about on that. Salut salutation of the letter, try to direct the letter to specific person if possible. Don't assume their gender. That's very important because let me see if I can show you this. Uh, let me know if, uh, are you seeing a new page? Yes, we are, Freddy. Thank you. These are names that are uh, unisex. So even, you know, if you see an Alex, don't assume it's a he or a she. These are many, uh, it's interesting because this, it's a long list that shows you that you should not assume anything in terms of gender, okay? So, um, 
Uh, this is uh, important that you consider because you don't want to make that mistake when as a first impression, it's better than to use um, uh, you know, a generic uh, or call the, the company and understand, ask uh, you know, some information that will give you the, the right, um, even, even the right uh, title of that person. The, 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 that, that will definitely make a difference. First, then you have to capture the attention. In marketing, we have an acronym called PAPA, presentation, amplification, proof, and action. It's the same here. Presentation, you have to capture your atten the attention of that person. Uh, the first paragraph is key here. As I mentioned before, those 15, 20 words will have to grab the reader by writing a compelling opening. Explain why you're the ideal person and describe what makes you so qualified for that job. Indicate the position you're applying for and, I, and how you found out. That's key here. Describe how, how uh, creator decided. Describe how you track your track record of success, skills, and previous jobs have prepared you for this position and explain how you can contribute again for to the company uh, in terms of quality and your ability to handle multiple multiple tasks, work as a team, supervise others. This second paragraph will definitely uh, expand on those um, that first uh, few uh, words on the first paragraph to create the desire, and then you go to action. Uh, again, this second paragraph, in a way, is proof and uh, create so it's presentation, which is the first one, amplification, which would be the second one, proof in a way. Uh, you're saying my skills, my experience will help you uh, achieve your goals. Then the third paragraph is call for action. Express your interest in discussing in person how your skills can achieve the company's goals. Uh, in reference, go again and reference you how. You have increased sales, production, participation in your present or past jobs. This is a call for action, call to action, which is key here. In terms of job interviews, uh, we have a few minutes left. Be succinct, two minutes per response. That's key here. Don't go over explaining every detail. Uh, they just want to grab what's in the essence of you in terms of a professional. Polish your skills, practice, practice, practice. Go with a friend, a family member, and uh, do mock interviews with that person. Be ready to answer questions such as, why do you think you're good for fit for this position? Many times they will ask you, tell us about yourself. <clears throat> they're not saying, they're not asking for you to give you, uh, tell them your life story. They want to, understand who you are as a professional. So when they ask you to tell us about yourself, don't go in, you know, they'll start when you were a kid growing up, you know, you can do it, do it succinctly, but concentrate on what your skills, your experience, how you can get things done for the benefit of the company. Why do you want to work with us? That's where you, your research will come in. And then you, you can talk about the, why you like the company, uh, that you're very excited about their, their plans to expand. Or if you go into detail, again, two, three minutes per, per response, and they understand that you have done your research, that you really uh, are a person who, are, who will definitely go and understand concepts and be able to communicate them clearly, you have a better chance of getting that job interview, uh, that uh, offer. What are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? Always on weaknesses. Strengths are very easy. Always on weaknesses, look for weaknesses that are turned into opportunities. For example, you know, you can say that you may, you, one of your weaknesses may be not to understand a concept because you don't have, in, in that case, you, uh, you may need more information on specific area, but you go into your strengths, but I am a quick learner and I'll be able to 
get the information and get the job done. So try always to have two, three, four weaknesses that you think of that you uh, state them and then you turn them into strengths. What do you know about this company? Then again, your research will come in. You will be able to provide a lot of information because you have done your, your due diligence in terms of doing your research and you will uh, get past that, uh, that first, uh, you know, that interview. In terms of salary negotiation, also important to understand that you, when you have a salary in mind and you go maybe to a second interview, they offered you that position. When they offer you that position, you, not, you do not say instantly, I'll get, I'll, I'll take it. Always it's good to say, thank you very much for offering uh, the position to me. I will give me please until to, tomorrow. Uh, I will give you an answer. If you want to uh, understand that you deserve a better salary, that they're not offering a salary up to par to what you want or the, what the industry is paying, you can go into that other uh, second interview or that meeting and uh, explain to them, to them why your skills, your experience, uh, are so important for this company. And if that, if they consider an extra one or two dollars or whatever you think that is adequate, it will definitely um, be very, uh, it will return to them in productivity in terms that you will do the job for them and you will get things done. Salary negotiation is really delicate. You have to think about it beforehand. Uh, because uh, that is something that you have to, you know, you should, if you're going to salary negotiation, you, you should go to YouTube and look for techniques because that's an area where definitely you can go uh, a lot further. On virtual interviews, check your camera angle, lighting. You don't want the cameras up there too high. You don't want a, a, a cluttered background. Uh, use a simple background or, you know, you can use uh, a, uh, you know, background that you can just upload. So basically, the, um, we're right on time to 12.15. Uh, I, will, I will definitely um, answer questions. Uh, this has been a, you know, uh, compressed um, uh, description of how to do job search. And um, it's a process, again, that if you take your time and do it right, you'll definitely increase your chances of getting that job and uh, creating a pathway for a, for a more successful professional career. Yes, Trevi, totally agree. Thank you so much for that lovely presentation. It was very thorough. I don't know if you've been looking in the chat section, but you've been very popular. Everyone's saying it's very informative. They're learning a lot, taking notes. And just a reminder for everyone, we will be sharing the presentation at the end with the resources that Fred gave. Yes. Um, so yes, thank you, Freddy, for walking us through that process. It was very thorough, not only during the search and how to search for remote, for something that's approximate or fitting to your lifestyle and what you want, but also you making sure that your resume, your cover letter is tailored to the company and what expectations they have. So it's looking at this um, as a strategy to be mindful and uh, intentional about what your next step in your career is going to be. So Freddy, that was super thorough. Again, thank you so much. Um, we're going to look at the questions because I know a few came in. Um, let's start off with Emilia. She, she writes, so Freddy, with so many options these days, especially in tech, how does one make the big decision on, the job, on what job to go for? That's a great question. One of the areas that you, you should consider is where you are, for example, in the ladder or the, the, the uh, progression in your position. For example, if you're IT support, you do some research and you see that there, what the name for the entry level position may be desk IT, desktop, uh, desk um, support. But then as you go up, you will see that data analyst is one of the top positions for that, uh, for that 
uh, progression. So you have to, first of all, understand where you are in that, uh, those steps or that ladder. And then you go and do research and then you pinpoint where you can do your research, you, where you can work, what positions you uh, are adequate for your experience and your skills and your, um, your education. And then you, you narrow it down. Also understanding, you have to go through the self assessment. What are you looking for? So that combination, that um, combination of, uh, of what you want and what they offer, that will give you a, an idea of how to narrow the options. And then when you start looking for positions, you start looking for requirements and for qualifications, and you will see yourself where you fit. And then you narrow it down, and then maybe you work on the keywords so that you're narrowing down your positions. Again, it's huge, especially if you're looking for a job where you are willing to move around the US, it's going to be incredibly uh, huge, the pool of, uh, pool of options. So narrow it down by understanding, you know, that um, really uh, combination of what you want and what they offer. And then uh, work your way through that. Always keeping, you know, trying to log information, trying to um, use an Excel sheet to basically narrow down the options. Because once you have five, 10, 20 positions that you're considering, you have to write things down. So make it methodical, make uh, you know, follow a strategy and you'll be able to, to find your way to a better job, better position. Yes, I, I totally agree. Uh, especially when you have so much options, you could get lost in them. So organizing your search is very important. Um, I have another question from Mia, and I think these go hand in hand, Freddy. Um, she says, hello, Freddy. You just said your skills have to align with the job you're applying for. So where does learning on the job come to play? Well, experience is very important. Uh, and many companies nowadays, if they see that you have a basic skill set that are, what, what again, what are called transferable skills, and they are impressed with your personality, with your way of communicating. Communication is key here also, because employees are looking for people who can convey complex uh, concepts and ideas. If you are able to basically uh, show them that you can do something on the, on the job training and learning is part of the, of the whole equation. Uh, that's why, you don't have to restrict yourself to, uh, you, you, can, you can do a, a wider uh, search because if you feel that you have those transferable skills and you're very good at communications and you're, and you're very good at teamwork and maybe uh, managing people, you can then go into and, and try to, to go into those positions and use that concept of learning on the job to tell them I'm willing to learn, I'm, I'm willing to work with you. I have great skills that I'll be using, you know, maximizing for this position so that I can so that I can get things done. And that's a way in which you learn on the job. You will always learn on the job in any position, even if it's an entry level position. More so because you're you have you're coming up uh, with a clean slate in a way. So uh, those skills are something, those experiences are something that you will integrate into your resume. So definitely uh, learning on the job is key. It, that's called development. It's part of what uh, we all go through in life, in a professional career. Yes, and I think that's key, Freddy, just mentioning that you are willing to learn if you don't have the exact skill set, but just having some alignment or interest in, in what they're, the employer is looking for is very important. So totally agree. Um, I have another question here that says, what if you are not sure who will re read your cover letter? Can we use ma'am slash sir? I know you touched about names and the sex of the person. Yes, uh, 
yes, uh, you can use generic uh, salutation. It's better than to use the wrong, um, you know, wrong way of saying something, or you know, of referring to that person. So if you're not uh, um, sure who will read that, maybe you can use, uh, you know, recruiter manager, dear recruitment manager. Look for options uh, for the, your specific area or industry, and then you may be able to find generic uh, ways of, uh, uh, you know, referring to the person. We have seen for years the word, uh, the use of word, sir or madam. You know, always look for new ways of, uh, you know, seeing, understanding what uh, that specific industry um, may want. If it's a big company, it could be a recruitment officer who will uh, read that letter. So, um, but the great, the best way of uh, of addressing a letter would be to know the person, uh, you know, the name and the gender of that person. Yes, totally. Um, and we have one more here. Um, is the graduation year relevant for candidates who have recently graduated? I have learned that the graduation year is no longer necessary on a resume. Have you heard that, Freddy? If, again, if you have, depending, if you're in, uh, at an entry level position, um, they may, um, they may lo look into that. Um, if they usually, you know, when you look at a, at a um, the education section of a resume, and you don't you don't see date of graduation. You may ask yourself why the person didn't put that information there. So you know, it, maybe one of the uh, one of the areas that you know that that you look for also is you know the years. Is there a sequence? If I see gaps in that resume where the person didn't work for two years or three years or worse, worse uh, than that. If I see the person has had jobs for three or six months, three or six months, I, that doesn't look good. So it's always good to have be in a position, in a job for at least one year and um, try to, um, you know, if, if there's a big gap in your life, you can, you know, uh, include it in your cover letter. For example, you know, if it's or in, in your interview, uh, I have been a mother for you know for for some years, or I have been. You you can explain it in ways that are professional, but at the at the same time that they, they ex, explain a gap in your resume. Uh, so it's very important to always um, try to stay in a job for a year, because or it's better also uh, then to remove it from your resume if it's only gonna be only three months, unless that's a project or a, an internship or a short-term uh, contract. You can say, but you should say so. If I see that it's, uh, you, you were only there six months, but I, I, you tell me that I was a contract or project, that's fine. If not, uh, you know, we'll start asking myself why that person was not there for a longer time. Yes, uh, and Freddy, uh, we've we've gone through all of the answers. I tried helping in between, just recapping some of that. But just a reminder, guys, we are sending all of this information to you afterwards via email. Again, thank you, Freddy, for the great information that can support thank our you. audience uh, become in becoming well prepared as they start or continue their jobs job hunting efforts. So all it's of always, you. That, sorry. I'm sorry, it's always good to uh, understand that looking for a job requires effort and requires education, really, because that's going to change. It's an investment in time, but that will translate into a good wage, a good position, and a development in terms of a professional career. Yes, yes, very well said, Fabi. And, and I think we spoke about it even your presentation, it's about intentionality um, and you looking for that next step, right? So thank you so much for the, the details. Uh, thank you for all of you that tuned in. Uh, again, we're gonna send this presentation to you. Um, 
with additional resources provided by Freddy and by the entire economic empowerment team at the Hispanic Federation. For all of you to further explore, to refer to and take advantage of. Again, we're bringing these resources to you guys to take advantage from, uh, of, so please do. Um, also, we would love to hear from you. If you can please take two minutes or less to complete the survey, you have the QR code that's on the screen and we will be putting the link in the chat box as well. We want to know how we're doing um, and some feedback from all of you guys. Um, so again, if you can take two minutes, it's about six to eight questions. Um, but also, uh, if you would like to hear more about the Hispanic Federation, please visit our website at Hispanic, hispanicfederation.org and click on get updates to stay in the loop with upcoming events and wide range of topics. I'm gonna to share some events with you in a bit. We are currently promoting our health insurance assistance hotline where you uh, can call or email the following information that's shown on the screen to get help signing up for health insurance if that's of interest to you or anyone in your family, friend, network. Um, and also I'd like to share these upcoming events. Uh, please, Peter, the next slide. So the first one is coming on uh, June 9th. This is gonna be in Spanish called Vida Latina, Nutricion y Salud. We are promoting everything health. So please guys, if you're interested, we would love for you to join again through our Facebook Live. The link is right there. You can go on our Facebook page and sign up. Next slide, please. And also we have another um, event in Spanish called Estafas y Fraudes Relacionados con el Asilo. So this is for our asylum seekers that have gone through scams and frauds. This is gonna be on the 16th of June in Spanish, also gonna be Zoomed and live. There's a link there that you can uh, explore. And again, if you go to our website, hispanicfederation.org, uh, you'll find more information. Next slide, please. And we would love to um, lastly encourage you to sign up for our last session of the Career Expo series, which is interview and recruitment workshop, where we have presenters share the best practical advice to a successful professional interview with mock presentations and share open job opportunities where you can apply to. You can learn more and register on our webpage at hispanicfederation.org slash Career Expo 2022. Uh, again, this is going to be the last session of our of our four series workshop. Um, and again, we were trying to provide a holistic set of resources that can help you pick up extra skills and more information in advancing your career. We're really hoping that you take advantage of them all. Um, and lastly, next slide, please. Again, we're just promoting here the, the last session of our uh, series. It's been four of them. Thank you for everyone who has joined. Uh, since the beginning, since May 17, it's been a success. I'm glad to see a few familiar names as well. Um, so thank you all for joining us. And lastly, we are going to address gift cards. So gift cards, um, as you guys know, here at the Hispanic Federation, we are a nonprofit, national nonprofit. And this programming is brought to you by the Department of New York City, DYCD, for youth and um, community development. With that being said, there are some requirements for you to get the gift cards. First, uh, anyone who's registered, and again, we take our programming very serious, and we know there's folks that are in need of these resources to advance their careers, but we also know there's people that might take advantage of some opportunities. Anyone who registered with one email multiple times and logged in with various names, as happened in the last session that we noticed, you are automatically disqualified. So that means someone is trying to get in multiple times and take advantage of the um, gift card opportunity. So again, anyone that has done that will be automatically disqualified. We are focusing first and foremost on New York City residents, then USA. So those are your emails being attached to those addresses will be out first and completing the survey. So those are the requirements and you have to attend the entire um, webinar. So those are the requirements for um, the webinar career expo series. And again, because due to our funding, this is, these are the requirements that have to be met.